NASA has received the first clear photo of Ultima Thule, the space rock beyond the orbit of Pluto, which was visited by a probe on New Year's Day. Scientists compared the previous images of the distant object to the new photo taken from a distance of 28,000 kilometres. Meet Ultima Thule. The new photos revealed the snow, snowman shape and the reddish hue of Ultima Thule. As data continues to trickle in, the New Horizons probe is also scheduled to send pictures from a distance of three and a half thousand kilometres. There's a new boss in the land of the Bossa Nova. Though this one moves to an altogether less gentle rhythm. The economy went down. We lost, the, you know, a lot of work, jobs, and now it's the time to change, you know. This guy is an honest guy. Jair Bolsonaro took a call of congratulations from Donald Trump and promised to make Brazil great again, with this Bible as his guide. Crime, corruption and communism, the three perceived evils his supporters want the former army captain to purge. Qatar has decided to withdraw its membership from OPEC, effective January 2019. The shock announcement will see the small, resource-rich Gulf state branch out on its own. Independent of the OPEC oil cartel, a group which collectively determines members' oil output and whose member states control 44% of global oil supply. While Qatar is one of OPEC's smallest oil producers, it is one of the world's largest producers of liquefied natural gas. We will do our best, but we don't have great potential. We are very realistic about what our potential is. Our potential is gas. A member of OPEC since 1961, the kingdom's decision to pull out coming at a turbulent time in Gulf politics. Doha under a boycott by former neighboring allies, including Saudi Arabia, for the last 18 months. Yet, the Emirates swears this decision is a purely economic one. It has nothing to do with the blockade. If any country wants to withdraw, it, uh, what it has to do is basically put in writing its request or its decision to, to withdraw, and it, uh, it basically withdraws in the next calendar year. At a time when the de facto head of OPEC, Saudi Arabia, seeks to expand membership, the loss of Qatar could be a sign of further fracturing in Gulf relations. The kingdom's announcement having immediate impacts on oil markets, halting the downward run of the last month as skittish investors fear this latest development could see instability in the supply line. On Tuesday, Austria's Supreme Court ruled that same-sex couples will be allowed to marry in Austria from 2019, adding that a law to the contrary violated the principle of non-discrimination. The move brings Austria into line with many other European nations, including Germany, France, Britain, and Spain. A Chinese spacecraft has made the first successful landing ever on the far side of the moon. And this is what it looks like. This image was sent by the probe Chang'e 4, which made what Chinese officials described as a soft landing early this morning. The probe is equipped with a rover and measuring devices and is also carrying seeds for an experiment in cultivating vegetables in a closed environment on the lunar surface. The mission is seen as an important step as China develops its space program. It's a schism of immense historical significance. In Istanbul on Saturday, the spiritual leader of Orthodox Christians around the world approved the split which will see a Ukrainian church formally accepted as independent from its Russian counterpart. Ukraine's President Petro Poroshenko was there to witness the ceremony. Glory to God, without his will this would not have been possible, he said. The move has incensed Russia. For centuries, Ukrainian Orthodox Christians have lived under Moscow's patriarchy. But since the breakup of the Soviet Union, a rival independent church has steadily grown in importance. Ukraine accuses Moscow of using the Russian church as a tool for spreading pro-Kremlin propaganda. Malaysia's King Mohammed V has resigned. Stepping down on Sunday, it marks the first time a monarch in that country has left the throne before completing their five-year tenure. No reason for the abdication was given, and palace officials did not respond to requests for comment. 
Malaysia has nine royal households who typically take turns to sit on the throne. The selection of the next king is decided by a vote in the Council of Rulers. King Mohammed V said he was grateful for the opportunity given to him by the council, thanking the Prime Minister and the government. The resignation comes barely a week after the king resumed his duties after spending two months away on medical leave. In December, images purporting to show him getting married in Russia appeared on social media. The palace did not respond to requests for comment on the photos or reports of a marriage. The message à la nation du chef de l'État, Ali Bongo Ondimba, visant à clore rapidement le débat sur sa santé, a plutôt renforcé les doutes sur sa capacité à assumer les lourdes charges liées à la fonction de président de la République. Une fois encore, une fois de trop, les conservateurs acharnés du pouvoir, dans leur funeste besogne continue d'instrumentaliser et de chosifier la personne d'Ali Bongo Ondimba en mettant en scène une un malade dépourvu de plusieurs de ses facultés physiques et mentales. Face à toutes ces manœuvres de manipulation et de théâtralisation et devant le blocage du fonctionnement régulier des pouvoirs publics qu'elle entraîne, à l'heure des défis mondiaux, le spectacle désolant de ce discours de nouvel an à la nation est une honte aux yeux du monde pour notre pays qui a perdu sa dignité. Sous le regard complice de la haute hiérarchie militaire, ces officiers généraux supérieurs et subalternes qui ont failli à leur mission, celle de défendre les intérêts supérieurs de la nation. Ces derniers ont décidé de privilégier leurs intérêts personnels. La patrie nous a tout donné. Elle a fait de nous les personnalités que nous sommes. Nous ne pouvons l'abandonner au moment où elle a le plus besoin de nous. Ainsi, le mouvement patriotique des jeunes des forces de défense et de sécurité, soucieux de sauver la démocratie en péril, préserver l'intégrité du territoire national et la cohésion nationale, a décidé ce jour de prendre ses responsabilités afin de mettre en déroute toutes les manœuvres en cours visant la confiscation du pouvoir par ceux qui, dans la nuit du 31 août 2016, ont lâchement fait assassiner nos jeunes compatriotes avec le soutien des institutions illégitime et illégal. Thousands took to the streets to demonstrate against the government. More than two dozen protesters were killed. Opposition leader Juan Guaido declared himself caretaker president and vowed to end what he called a dictatorship before disappearing to an unknown location. While many Western countries agree with Guaido, Maduro's own international allies have thrown their weight behind his socialist government, with Maduro acknowledging the backing of Russian President Vladimir Putin. Todo el apoyo de Rusia Russia gives its full support to the legitimate and constitutional government that I preside over, its full support for peace and the integrity and sovereignty of Venezuela. He told me, President Maduro, you can count on the unwavering support of Russia. And now, more than ever, we will be working on bilateral projects to further develop Venezuela. Breaking news from Kenya, where gunshots and explosions have been heard in the capital, Nairobi, at a compound containing a hotel and offices. Police say for now they're treating it as a terrorist attack. It's happened in the Westlands district of the city, where people have been fleeing the scene, escorted by heavily armed soldiers. One man has been let out with a gunshot wound in the back. Well, let's go straight to the BBC's Africa security correspondent, Tommy Oladipo, who joins me on the line from Nairobi. And Tommy, we're seeing dramatic scenes there of security forces leading people away who are literally fleeing for their lives. Exactly say, uh, you know, how the attack happened. But there are lots of security forces here, lots of emergency services, ambulances, fire brigade, uh, all dealing with, with the people coming out. I, I saw uh, two people come out with gunshot wounds. One of them looked critical, um, and um, uh, there were also three vehicles on fire. Do we know if this attack is ongoing? Um, uh, I have not heard any gunfire um, in the last sort of 15, 20 minutes, so uh, I, I'm sort of assume that things, there's a lull now, but the security forces are in there and lots more arriving, uh, including a few foreign, uh, foreign personnel as well. 
Tell us about this uh, particular area and this compound, uh, because we know it uh, contained a, a luxury hotel as well as some offices. Yes, indeed. This is uh, in, the, in the Westlands area of Nairobi, part residential, part business. Uh, it's not far from one of the campuses of, of the University of Nairobi as well. So, uh, and and the, the complex itself um, contains offices, uh, contains a high uh, a hotel called Dusit D2, uh, which is which is one of the major hotels here in Nairobi. You know where uh, a lot of high-profile people come to to stay as well as to have meetings. Um, so um, you know that's the kind of clientele you find uh, in that in that compound. And of course, we know that this attack has has just uh, happened in the last hour or so. But has anyone claimed responsibility as yet? Um, we've not heard anything so far, uh, but. Uh, Security forces are treating this uh, as a terrorist incident, uh, standing by them, and a lot of them talking terrorist, terrorist. Um, and we're seeing, uh, I don't know if you can hear, the helicopter overhead. There have been two uh, security helicopters circling, uh, as well as um, counterterrorism squads uh, coming in as well. So they're treating this as a, as a terror attack. Tommy Oladipo joining us there from Nairobi. Thank you very much. At least 21 people have been killed in central Mexico after a massive explosion of a fuel pipeline. The pipeline had been ruptured by thieves to enable local residents to tap the petrol illegally. More than 70 people were injured in the blast and the death toll is expected to rise. Illegal tapping of petrol pipelines is a major issue in Mexico, with hundreds of cases being reported. Pictures from earlier in the day showed people with containers gathering fuel from a giant fountain spewing from the ruptured pipeline. The government has frequently urged citizens to end the practice. It's one of the worst attacks by the Taliban since the armed group was pushed from power by U.S. forces in late 2001. A suicide bomber drove a truck packed with explosives into a military compound. What followed was carnage. Officials and witnesses say several dozens of people have been killed. It was a very dangerous incident and the sound of the explosion was very loud. The windows of our house and other houses close to the area were broken and the wounded ones were taken to different hospitals here and in Kabul. The facility is run by an elite intelligence unit in charge of training tribesmen to fight the Taliban. The attack is another indication of the armed group's growing influence. Last year, Taliban fighters launched a series of attacks across the country, including a suicide bomb attack in the capital, Kabul, in January. At least 100 people were killed, mostly civilians. Analysts believe the Taliban is increasing its attacks to gain more leverage in crucial talks with U.S. diplomats in Qatar. What we... Maduro remains the president today, at least in his eyes. But for countless Venezuelans who deem his election last year rigged, who blame him for the country's extreme economic misery, the key moment in yesterday's protests when opposition leader Juan Guaido declared himself acting president quickly recognized by Canada, the U.S. and others, but significantly not by Venezuela's powerful military. On Venezuelan TV today, multiple pledges of support for Maduro, said Defense Minister Pedrino Lopez. We are here to avoid confrontation. This as tensions with the U.S. grow. The moment a powerful wave of toxic waste began sweeping over everything in its path. The collapse of a dam at an iron ore mine in southern Brazil a week ago has left at least 115 people dead and around 250 missing. The cause of what could be Brazil's deadliest mine disaster was likely to have been parts of the sand and dried mud structure dissolving into liquid. 
The ceremony was held at the site of the disaster at around 1 p.m. local time, the hour at which the dam breached. Rescue work stopped as 10 helicopters released flower petals onto the destroyed mine. Locals now fear that the town of Brumadino will fall. All the employment, says this man, as most people worked in mining, which means the city will go down. Mine owners Vale SA say the 12 million cubic meters of residues that were released into the Paropiba River did not have dangerous levels of metals, but experts say the impact on the environment could be irreversible. The US Justice Department on Monday filed an array of criminal charges against the company. A 13-count indictment filed in New York accuses Huawei, its chief financial officer Meng Wanzhou, and two affiliated firms of bank and wire fraud, as well as conspiracy in connection with Iran. A separate 10-count indictment alleges the company stole robotic technology from rival T-Mobile USA and offered bonuses to employees to do so. Both sets of charges expose Huawei's brazen and persistent actions to exploit American companies and financial institutions and to threaten the free and fair global marketplace. One country surely has the right to safeguard its information security, but it cannot, under the pretext of security, harm or even stifle the legitimate operation of enterprises with unwarranted excuses. All countries should be vigilant and resist such unjustifiable practice and bullying.